Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome to another episode of The Trevor Olson Show, episode number 19 on Saturday, November 21st, 2020. I am your host, Trevor Olson, episode 19, Patreon edition. I'm just fucking up these intros as of late. <clears throat> That's okay. How how are you? How's everyone doing? Uh, I'm excited to be here, as always, chatting with you guys. Always looking forward to it. Never knowing what's going to be coming out of my mouth. Just shouting into a mic, worrying my parents that I actually have no career path or plan. He, what's he doing down there? He's just, he yells. Is he angry? I mean, I, should we tell him, like, should we make him move out? I just, I'm so worried. He just, he yells downstairs and he just sounds so angry. And it's, I just, I just, I don't know. I just don't know why. Was I a bad mother? <laughs> Was I a bad mother? No, no. No, my wife, my wife, this is my father, my wife, you are not a bad mother. <clears throat> I failed him as a father. I should have been more tough on the boy. Cause now he just sits down there, yells into that there metal doohickey, spouting off nonsense into nobody, in, nobody's ear, nobody's listening to him. That boy is a fool. That boy ought to take a shovel, go out back and dig his own grave because he's killing himself down there. He's ruining his life. He should have been a carpenter. He should have been a mechanical engineer. Don't you understand that they've got benefits? Don't you see? The boy doesn't have dental. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't my fault? It's not your fault, sweetheart. I failed him. The boy doesn't have dental. You know, you have failed your son when your 25-year-old son doesn't have dental. I should have been. I should have disciplined that boy. Should have grabbed my belt like my father took to me. Should have been more serious with him. Taught him, taught him how to lay some concrete. All right, everyone always needs concrete. <laughs> so you're not, so you're, you're saying I didn't fail him? You didn't fail him. You didn't fail him. That, nah, that no good having no concrete laying, Mike Doohickey yelling, blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy looking bastard with his little blue background in his room. He's not even a real studio. It's his room. He's kick. I'm kicking him out. He's out. He's out of here. So things are going well here. <laughs> so I didn't fail him. No, you didn't. You didn't. Things are going great. Um, <laughs> how is your week? I've been doing so many things that I normally never do. As most of you probably know, I am very methodical, very routinized, very specific about what I do throughout the day. I'm up at 7.30, I'm doing my morning routine, I'm outside drinking coffee, I'm listening to Audible, doing med breathwork meditations, starting my day off right. And none of that really happened this week. I did get up every day at 7.30, that didn't change. But what did change was... The fact that November 15th rolled around deer season. The horror for the deer. Imagine if deer knew that it was deer season. Like they, they knew the day was coming. They'd just be fucking terrified. I, if I was a deer, uh, I would, which I, it's 2020, I could probably just identify as a deer. What are you? I'm a deer. I identify as a deer. And I feel violated and trespassed in my rights if you don't see me as a deer. Therefore, I will cancel you and get you fired and ruin your life. <laughs> I am a deer. If I was a deer, I would just 
skedaddle in t- into town for a f- X amount of weeks. Hang out, find some nice lady, some old lady, some old widow who who's got a you know surplus of bread. She she's always got stale bread. Cause she she can never finish it off. Uh, so tossing out. I mean that you got you got a good supply of food. You got safety because no one's gonna shoot you in the yard. Let some psych maybe some fucking youper hick would. I mean, you'd you'd have to be a a real youper hick to. First off, you have to have a gun in your car, which that's I'm assuming that's pretty common around here. I, I drove my dad's truck the other day. He had two shotguns right in his <laughs> right in the front seat. Were they in a case? That's illegal. If they were in a case, they were in a case. So they'd have to have the guns, and then not only have the guns, but then they'd have to have the balls to get out and shoot the deer in the nice old widow's yard. Okay, when she's outside with some bread, trying to get over the loss of her husband. It's been five years, sweetheart. You gotta move on. It's been five years. You were 71. You're 76 now. Go find a nice 68-year-old. Show him your stale bread. All right? I don't know. You know. Invite him over for tea. Have some nice decaffeinated tea because you don't want to get too wired up as a 76-year-old. Invite him over. Show him the deer. Maybe he will shoot the deer. Maybe you're into the Uper Hicks. The full-on Uper Hicks. Maybe that's your thing. I want a man who's willing to just m- murder animals in in town. Who It doesn't matter if there's a child in a stroller. Mom's jogging by. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> there goes you. Shooting the deer. Imagine. That's probably happened somewhere. Probably around here. Felcheria. So, Segola. All these all these boom towns. <laughs> oh, I love all the little towns that are yeah, like a few hundred people. You know there's a lot of cousin fucking going on there. I get it. I get it. Listen. I'm 25. It's a small town. You've got options. You have limited options. There are limited options if you are living in a small town. I was at a wedding a few months ago, just at a COVID fest, spreading it to the... I hugged so many people. I was spitting in people's ears and eyes, coughing on their necks and in their mouths. Shit, I shit right on the floor. I don't think that spreads COVID, but people were not pleased. So I'm at this wedding, and... And this, uh, I ran into an old friend, and she was like, "How's dating around here?" And I was like, "What? Well, I? Sh- it's it's non-existent. It's it's non-existent. Everyone is looking for someone, and no one's finding anyone because there's no options. All right, there's a few attractive women. There's definitely attractive women around here." But they're almost always, excuse me, in my experience, when I approach them, start talking to them, most of them are already dating someone. All right? I, the, the, uh, yeah, most are already dating. I have a boyfriend. Great. Fuck you. Why are you here? Why did we meet up? Are you cheating on him? Why are, we, why are we sitting here in the cafe getting coffee? I have a boyfriend. Do you? <laughs> I just why would you say let's get let's let's meet up for tea at Crumpets? I flew to the UK for this bitch. I flew to the UK to get laid. And she had a boyfriend. And she had the nerve to not bring it up. In a in a in a conversation, it, shoot me a text, email it to me, snap it. We have more forms of communication than we've ever had, and this no good UK having slut. <laughs> she, none of this is true. She didn't have the balls to tell me she had a boyfriend. That crumpet, eating tea, drinking. 
UK slut. Um, so the dating scene around here is a little rough. Yeah, I'm single. I just don't know how you're single. You're just so sweet. And oh, you've got to, but you've got to have a girlfriend. Nope. Not finding anyone. Maybe you try too hard. Maybe you're, maybe you're just putting, putting it out there. Maybe you should just let it happen. Listen, I've been trying to let it happen for 25 years. Maybe I tried a little too hard when I was younger because I didn't know what I was doing. You don't know what, you don't know how to operate amongst the opposite sex when you're young. You're 16, you're trying. You're getting a blowjob in the back of your car on prom night, and you're terrified, and you can't get off. That was my experience. There's my sexual insecurity. That's the foundation it, I was built, <laughs> built off of. You don't know what... You just don't know how to act when you're younger. I'm 25 now. I've got no problem around... I've got no problem with dating, meeting people... This, the whole thing. It's good. It's good. But, like I said, I just don't, I don't see many. And it's so limiting that if you do see someone, you got to, like, pounce like a cat on a mouse and find out the details. Like, she's like what's going on? She she into me too? Uh, is she dating someone? All right. It, are we cousins? Uh, no. Okay, no cousins. Good. Good. So... Maybe we could grab drinks. Like that one hot chick I saw. I saw some hot chick. Hot chick. If you listen, which I know you're not because this is a Patreon episode. If you're listening, so I'll just continue like you are anyway. If you're listening, I hope you see. I hope you know. I hope you message me. I hope you sign up on Patreon and you message me. Hey, I was that girl at Super One. I wanted to say hi. I was checking you out. She was. She was checking me out. I was checking her out. It was very quick. And in those moments, you're like, uh, uh, like, well, we're at a grocery store. Should I approach? <laughs> you're always just supposed to approach. Oh, I should have approached. Hey, and excuse me, it's a bit random, but I wanted to meet you and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Trevor. Oh my God, hi Trevor. So I couldn't help but notice that uh, you were checking me out over there. Oh, stop it! No, I wasn't. Hey, I'm not saying that I didn't like it. I mean, why else would I come over here and ask for your number? Boom, got the number. But that's all just a made-up scenario in my head because I'm a crazy person. And I'm single because she's the she's the only hot one of the hot only hottest hot girls. That I've seen in this town in the last, let me check, 10 years. It's been 10 years since I saw someone attracted before her. So to answer my old friend's question, how's dating around here? It's great. It's great. You get laid every decade and it's a lot of rigorous masturbation in between. That's how I'm getting through. How are you managing quarantine, Trevor? Lots of lubricant. All right? Have you... What's the brand name of a fucking lube? I don't know. How, how are you handling quarantine? Ah, I got the triple slippery. Oh my God, he's got the triple slippery lube. <laughs> Is that a brand? How are you handling it? Great. Great. I'm greased up six days a week. And on the seventh, I venture out like a human being and don't look at anyone because everyone's on their phone. Hi. I like that you look someone in the eye. They freak out. They're like, they scream. Hi, I'm Trevor. Uh, they're, they're confused. that they're, you, you haven't fucking sent them a, a, a DM on Instagram. That's how these people communicate. Hi, I'm Trevor. Shake hands, look him in the eye, be an adult, be a human being. They're just, they just, they just look. They're like, why is who is this person? Like, why? Who? How do I speak with this human being? My problem is, I'm, I'm, I've, it, I, from what I, my experience is, I date too young of women. I'm 25. 
most everyone I've dated has, but I mean, throughout the years, I've always dated girls that are younger than me. So I'm 25, you know, like 12 year olds. Uh, <laughs> oh, he just made a pedophilia joke. I'm not for pedophilia. Let me clarify. No, when I was like, when I was 21, I was dating my, you know, my first girlfriend. She was 19. So a couple years younger. And then I made the horrible mistake. Last person I was with, uh, as a 24 year old, I was 24 at the time. So as I was 24, she's 21. I'm telling you, don't date younger women. All right. And ladies, I'm trying to think from a woman's perspective. Why don't you stop being a whore? <laughs> Everyone goes through the whore face. Don't worry. I did it too. Why don't you stop spreading your legs to the world? Um, you know, maybe age-wise, I don't know. As a 25-year-old now, the last girl I was out with, uh, and she was she made it and she was emphatic in telling me that she's like, this is the first, this is, it was really weird. I, when I went out last, the other week, I messaged this girl and, uh, I'm attracted to her. And she's like, I just want you to know that I just want a friendship with you. And I was like, what the, no one's ever fucking said that to me right off the get go. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like what? What's wrong with me? I don't know. We still had a good time. I was like, listen, first off, quit flattering yourself. All right. I'm not interested. I pulled that one. Pulled that one off. I'm going to not go to sleep with you. Oh, jeez, you're already talking about sex with me. You just, you just flip it. it. It's easy. Flip it around, okay? But she's 27, and I'm 25. Men, gentlemen, date up. Date up in age, or at least similar age. Maybe not even age, just look at maturity level, all right? Like I said, if you both stop being whores <laughs> if you both stop being whores great now instead of banging everyone and everybody you just bang each other that's how it works okay so uh for me i'm looking for an older woman 20, i'm 25 a 25 year old 26 year old i don't want to get like you know too much older i was with an older woman once when I was 24. Uh, when I was 24? Yes. See, I was a little bit of a whore too. But I'm in my own home and I feel comfortable sharing this with you. Okay? I wasn't a huge whore. But I was a little bit of a whore. So, uh, the oldest woman I've been with. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you now. But I feel comfortable. All right? Uh, she was, I was 24, she was 44. <laughs> it was fun. She was, and then there was another one. She was 41. All right. There was a real connection. She's a woman. She can communicate what she wants like an adult. It was transparent. She was honest. She was very intense. All right. And I just, I went from a 41-year-old to a 21-year-old, and I shouldn't have. I should have stayed with the 41-year-old. Sure, she's, you know, got children and had a boyfriend. That's not, my, that's not my concern, all right? What I'm saying is, is she was a woman. That's how she made me feel. All these other women I've been with were girls. This was a woman. Not girls like age, like maturity level. <laughs> God, someone can just imagine somebody being like, some weird pedophilia thing. I'm not Jeffrey Epstein. Don't get mad at me. Be mad at Jeffrey. All right, go dig him up. I don't know where he is. Yell at him. But she was a woman. And she knew what she wanted. She was honest with me. I was honest with her. And so I, I'm in search of a woman. I don't want a girl. I don't want a girl anymore. I don't want these stupid, dumb <laughs> 18-year-olds. 
they're throwing themselves at me left and right. Not really. But if they were, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't want them. Not in a real connection, you know. If they're hot, okay. You know, no one's looking. They're 18, it's fine. They're adults. Well, not really. They're not, you know, mentally, they just, they're not really making choices. Legally, they're they're 18. All right? They can smoke cigarettes. Be a prostitute in Nevada. Is that the age? I'm assuming you can, isn't that, that's wild. That prostitution is legal in Nevada. That is good. That is good. Can't say I've ever been with a prostitute. Uh, Would I? Depends on the prostitute. <laughs> Depends on the situation. I don't, I wouldn't want to ever, I'm not at a place where I'm that lonely. Oh, it's not, it's not, you don't have to be lonely. It's about the experience. It's <laughs> just fucking, no. No, you go, you go, you travel to Nevada, you do the sh- casinos. That's an experience. I mean, it's prostitution, that's an experience too. I know someone who is with a prostitute. And he, he shared it with me in confidence. Is that how you say it? And I have I won't say his identity. But he was just like, yeah, you know, my friend and I, uh, you know, we just, uh, my friend, he called up. This, he's like, how much, sweetheart? And she's like, 300. And uh, he's like, all right, you're six for the both of us. And uh, <laughs> this, and uh, this one dude, yeah, banged her. They both banged her. What? A profession to choose. What a profession. What do you do for a living? I just take a lot of dick. Woman prostitutes. I or dude prostitutes. Excuse me. I remember I remember we did we looked up on here. We us together. We looked up a while ago how many prostitutes are in America. And percentage of male prostitutes. Obviously, male prostitution is way less. But I could, I could, that's a gig I could probably rock at. If I had no self worth, <laughs> uh, no, if I was completely brought up in a different manner and uh, I wouldn't feel bad, I don't know. I think any, any person, doesn't matter how you're brought up, you're, you know, you're not, you're not going to feel good at the end of the day. Well, you sit down at the end of the day and ask yourself, how, you know, am I happy with me? Probably not. Uh, you know, I took six dicks up the ass today. No. You know, I maybe, you know, I could handle two. Maybe. That's not me. This prostitute. I'm, I'm pretending to be a prostitute. A woman prostitute. Like, I just, I, I don't think, I don't think they're happy. All oh, the money is great. It's like, there's, billionaires making money legally cuz and they're not taking any cocks they're, and you don't have to be a billionaire make a few hundred thousand smart start a business what are we doing it's 2020 start a business all right what's your niche you could start a business if you liked shot glasses i'm just looking around my room Get guitar shot glasses. All right. If you were inf- you were obsessed with guitars and shot glasses, you could somehow make a business involving shot glasses and guitars. And there's gonna be enough people on the planet because there's a eight billion people. All right. And there's a billion people on the internet. If point zero 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 one percent of those people. Also, like shot glasses and guitar, you've got a business. That also seems to be the number of people dying. Point zero 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 one percent of people from COVID, and yet we shut down the economy. If the government can do it, so can you. <laughs> They're running a business. We know this. Start your business. Learn some sales and some marketing. Develop the skill set necessary to stop taking dicks all day. You don't have to, people, like, you don't have to do anything illegal anymore. It's like the idea, well, like, prisoners, like, prisoners, 
Like criminals. Well, all the, you can make a lot of good money, you know, stealing shit, which you can. It's illegal, and you'll probably fail because you're not that smart. Because you're first off, you're thinking of being a criminal. Most criminals are not intelligent. All right, you ne- you need someone who's high in disagreeableness, someone who's high in intelligence to pull off a good career as a criminal. Okay. If you're retarded, <laughs> he's not allowed to say that word. I mean, <laughs> if you're dumb, don't be a criminal. Okay? It sounds good. That's because you're stupid. All right? It's because you, you're, not, you're not thinking. Where, what's the plan? What's the five-year plan? In five years, I'd like to have uh, X amount of bank robberies and X amount of uh, diamonds from different heists and... No, you're too stupid, but you're not too stupid to start a business. Just start a, start a business. Think of some idea. Okay. Like I said, you could do the stupidest thing and there's going to be enough people out there who agree with that stupid thing. And then you just, you sell it to them. Obviously you have to figure out it's, it's easier said than done, but it's possible. You don't have to break any laws to make, have a great life. And I think you guys all know this. I, I don't know why I'm explaining it. But this show is unscripted and I've been yelling into the microphone for the last 26 minutes and I go where the conversation takes me. Okay? <sighs> Take a breather. Uh, <laughs> okay. My mom the other day, she's like, I just hey, I just kind of said that in the beginning. I just hate when you're yelling down there. Why are you yelling? And it's like, it's fun. I'm f- joke. It's a joke. Tw- twice. What, what, what do you not understand about twice weekly comedy podcast, mom? I'm going to be yelling in your basement twice a week. Maybe, maybe you should leave those days. Leave on Wednesdays. <laughs> leave on Saturdays. I just have to get out of the house. My crazy son, who I failed, is yelling. I failed that boy. I'm going to take a belt to him. I lock the door so they can't get in. I say, leave me alone. (laughs) Don't talk to me. No, that's not true at all. But (laughs) imagine if I had like a bad relationship with my parents. And I was like, fuck you. I'm down here just yelling into a microphone, never telling them that I like recording and doing a podcast. They're just like, what the fuck is going on with our son? He's schizophrenic. He's like, you got, we got to get him on medication. We need SSRIs, something. Or he's going to kill people. He just bought a nine millimeter. I'm worried. All right. He's going to shoot up a school. I, me just saying those words right now, I just ended up on some list. All right. Well, we detected the words, shoot up a school. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Keep an eye out on this blue-eyed boy. He's an Aryan. He's a Nazi. I love people throwing that word that word around. He's a Nazi. You're Nazi. You're Nazi. You've done all this amazing things for people, but if you don't agree with me 110% of the time, you're not as progressive as I am. Progressive as I am. You're a Nazi. Uh, yeah, let's just throw words around. So you don't have to break any laws to be successful. All right? You can make 100000 a year. That's a great living around here. It might not be in other places. Then move. Why are you living in a place? <laughs> My mom just messaged me. I'm busy, mom. She said, do you think your audience is deaf? Exactly. See? She's trying to shut me down. That bitch. No. <laughs> Move, why are you living in a place where it, it, it's a million dollars to live? Why? I'll just live. Let's live in California. It's sunny. It's nice. You can't even go to Applebee's out there. It's locked out. Try to go to a gym. They shut it down. I've heard that. I don't know if this is true, but I heard LA has just been shut down this whole time. LA seems to be a place that is dying. I could be wrong, and I'm not going to stop yelling because my mother texted me to stop yelling. All right? I'm an autonomous adult, and I will yell if I please. 
You got a half hour left. You got to put up with it. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't live in a place that costs a hundred thousand dollars a year to rent some eight by eight apartment. That's an idea, but it's sunny and the beach. Weigh your options. Weigh your options. We're at the halfway point, folks. We are at the halfway point. Uh, If you'd like to reach out to the show, which I'd love to hear from you, uh, as you are patrons, and you guys are top priority for me, and I mean that, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So please shoot me your questions, your comments, your concerns, your... You need to the Trevor Olson show at gmail.com so I can, yeah, uh, Trevor Olson show at gmail.com, the Trevor Olson show at gmail.com. You guys are all patrons. I don't need to mention the Patreon. Don't need to mention the, the Patreon. I don't need to mention it. All I have to say is thank you, thank you, thank you. All I will say is that if you are enjoying, all the benefits that you are getting and you'd like to upgrade. Now's the time to do it as there is a special going on for when you upgrade to the $20 tier, you will have the option of Skyping with me, which is usually a $50 and $100 tier option. Uh, One of our friends, Demetrius, who is a patron of the show, upgraded to uh, the $20 tier the other day. Him and I Skyped for a good long while. It was really fun. We had a great time. So if you are looking to upgrade, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. It's going for uh, 20-something more days. Just get on it. It's... <laughs> I'm, trying not to, I'm trying to breathe. Get on it. All right? All right? If you're considering it, now's the time. There's never been a better time to upgrade. All right? So head on over. You know where, it go- you know where to go. Okay? And upgrade. Not only are you going to get better benefits and more shit and more cool things... You're going to get a handwritten letter from me, personally. You're going to get an autographed picture. You're going to be able to Skype with me. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to talk more. All right? Not only do you get a bunch of cool shit, but I w- I'm fucking saving up money so I can get out, get the fuck out of here. All right? I, gotta, I, I can't have my mother texting me in the middle of a show saying, do you, think your, do you think your audience is deaf? Okay? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I feel like a loser. I'm desperate in down here. So upgrade now. All right? I don't care. I This is a high-pressure situation. Upgrade now. Your customers resent high pressure. Everyone resents high pressure. That's why I'm doing it. All right? I flipped the script. Upgrade now or die. <laughs> So thanks a lot for being patron uh, of uh, of the Patreon. Uh, it's yes, thank you, thank you very much. I need some water. I've been screaming for the last half thirty three minutes. Oh, it's embarrassing. Do you think your audience is deaf? No, mom. It's caught that being enthusiastic and having energy. Maybe you should try it. I'm just kidding. My mom's worked out her whole life. She's she just retired. She's been working for forty years. These are jokes. I don't have to explain this to you. Twice weekly comedy podcast. Maybe you should just talk soft. Yeah, because talking like this really is exciting. Because talking like this, this, this makes people laugh. It sounds fun. Let me let me just tone down the energy. Let me tone down the excitement and the enthusiasm. Let's just. Let's just stop fucking caring about the audience. How dare she message me? She doesn't even have a podcast. That's like me showing up when she's a nurse at the hospital for the last 40 years and me going, that's not how you do it, mom. How come you're running around filling these IVs? That bitch is dying. Leave her. All right? She doesn't need an IV. She's fat. She did that to herself. All right? That's me showing up and telling her what to do. I'm just being a bit loud. Have, do you entertain people? No. I just, I, I just, I've talked about this, but I just love, I love it 
when people who have no idea what the fuck they're talking about say you shouldn't do things. If you have dreams and aspirations and goals, which all of you should have, and I hope you do, don't listen to people who don't know what they're what the fuck they're talking about. All right? Don't do it. That's like listening to someone who's broke teaching you teach to, to, teaching you about investments. It's like a fat person training you at the gym. There's no credibility. Okay? There's no you find someone who's credible and maybe listen to them. Maybe Imitate the people who are great at the field that you want to be in. What are they doing? Oh, they work really hard. Okay, I'm going to have to work really hard. Okay? I just want to I want to make I want to save up investments. Well, like don't go, you don't go to a hobo. A hobo. A hoe. You don't go no. They you, you you know, if you're trying to shoot up meth, you go to a hobo. He has to preferably be a meth injecting hobo. Don't go to some clean hobo who's trying to get his life put together if you're trying to learn how to do meth. You go to the meth one. It's simple. So how dare my mother? How dare she? She has the nerve to send a text message to me mid-show like I'm like I'm not recording to say, do you think maybe you think your audience is deaf? No, I don't. I'm just delivering the show they want. <laughs> Woo! This is a fun one. This is a fun one. I look forward to these shows every week. I really do. And I know I'm doing something right when that's the case. I look forward to... To the show on Wednesday. I look forward to the show on Saturday. I didn't know if I would like this. I just said, fuck it. I'm going to start a podcast because I enjoy podcasts. And the, the music industry is, has, has died along with a quarter million people. There goes half my fan base, all right? Because my fan base was predominantly 85-year-old fat men. That's where the money was. And I said, listen, you got to lay off the Pringles and the sweet rolls. All right. COVID's here. But they wouldn't listen to me. I personally reached out, and I'm not lying to you guys, to every single person who's died in this country (laughs) from COVID. All of them. Because that's just the type of person I am. And I said, listen, you... You need to cut back on the fucking sugar, all right? You're an animal. What are you doing? All right? If you want to come to my show, you have to be alive. But then the government shuts down everything. But the government just roams around. They do all the things. Nancy Pelosi getting fucking haircuts. Don't leave your house. Don't. Do it. And then that bitch has the nerve to go out and get a haircut in the salon with no mask? I don't know what your thoughts are on masks, and I I don't care. If you think they're great, awesome. If you don't, awesome. That's irresponsible, is it? We don't know what this thing is. Mask, no mask. Clothes, no clothes. Why are we wearing clothes? Clothes rub on my skin. They give me acne. (laughs) Why are we wearing clothes? Clothes, no clothes. Maybe we should all be naked. Maybe, cause yes, because that's, that's you know, relevant to the, the mask thing. Maybe we shouldn't have clothes on. And maybe really fat people would lose some weight and they wouldn't have got COVID. And, 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 and we'd all get a bit more secure in our bodies. Or we'd, we'd fall backwards and we'd shrink ourselves. We'd be more insecure. We'd never leave the house because we're all naked. Like, I don't know where this, I don't know how I end up on these conversations, you guys. I, <laughs> I just roll with them and I end up on them. I, I don't know. I have no plan coming in. No plan. I go, all right, click. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Trevor Olson Show. That's why 
this show works. There's no script. Everything's fake. Everything is overproduced and fake. The news is fake. Fake news. Maybe not all the news, but it's it's biased and it's, you, you know, everything's biased. Whatever. You get the point. Everything's overproduced. All right. I was watching a Jeffrey. Do- I'm so used to podcasts where it's there's no editing and it's just hours of conversation. Transparency. Transparency. Hours of transparent conversation that I, I threw on a Jeffrey Dahmer documentary and it was so all over the place with, with, with different scenes and music and different interviews and people talking. I watched five minutes of it I was, and, and, the, and there was no objective thought. This woman, like doing the interview, she was just like, well, we think he did this and this and this and that. And it's like, well, do you guys have any evidence? They're like, well, they, like, like in a podcast – that question would have been brought up, like, what, what sort of evidence, you know, is there? And it's like, you don't have to do that on TV. T- like, the, the, the medium of TV is dying. We know this, all right? People love podcasts. People love Netflix. They love Hulu. They love YouTube. They love Amazon Prime. No one watches TV. We have TV, and there's... I've, I watch Family Guy with commercials because that's a good use of my time. I feel like a real winner after that. I actually love Family Guy, by the way. I do. I think it's very clever. I think the writing's great. I've talked about this. And again, my mother. My mother doesn't like it. I just don't think you should have this brain-melting show on. Maybe you should stop watching HGTV all day. Huh? Stop criticizing me, okay? I'm working hard in the basement trying to make a living, all right? Once I'm out, I'm out, okay? At the pace we're going on, Patreon, couple more years, I'm out, all right? Strictly from Patreon. Thank you. Upgrade today, you cheap fucks. Help me leave. I don't need to go far. I just need to be able to do a show where I'm not criticized. Okay, I just need it in my own place. I'm going to buy one of those little houses. There's a nice one for 80000 Okay, put a down payment. I don't know how this works. I've never bought a house. I've got good credit, though. I've got good credit. Seven fifty something. That's damn good. And if you're, you are beneath seven fifty. I'm better than you in every form of life. And you should be ashamed of yourself if you have bad credit. If you have bad credit, today's uh, video was sponsored by uh, Get Better Credit, you fucking idiot. I didn't have credit for years. I didn't, I got, I've had it for a, like a year and nine months. If you're struggling with credit, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can build it up. It's simple. And it's nice. You just fucking buy a bunch of shit. You pay for it later. Just don't miss a payment. All right? Do a little note. Not a note. What are we, in the 40s? <laughs> Set a reminder on your phone. Set a reminder. Pay your credit card bill one week before it's due. Not a day before, you psycho. I'll just do it the day before. You you did it. You don't even have credit. You think you're gonna have the responsibility to do it the day before? No. You have to develop this new habit and do it right. So I've got good credit, and I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. I'm ready, mentally ready, financially on the way. Okay. When the Patreon hits 2000 a month, I'm out. It's almost at 500. I'm out. 2000 I'm out. That's enough for bills. I have low expenses. I didn't get any bitch pregnant. We're good. I'm single. I just need a house. I need to pay the rent. That's all. <laughs> just got to pay the rent, okay? Some of the bills. I'm going to take the sauna with me. By the way, we I have the sauna 
folks, it is here. You've heard me talk about this sauna for the last fucking eight weeks. All right? And I'm going to bitch to you now about it. I'm not going to name the company. All right? I don't want to throw them under the bus. Redwood Outdoors is the company. And they... Uh, listen, the sauna's nice. It is. It's nice. It was a kit, a sauna kit that had to be put together. It's one of those barrel-shaped ones, all right? It's very nice. However, okay, I'm gonna, here's here's the problem. Okay, let's let's start on one. Okay. They said four to six weeks. It got here in almost eight. I'm no math genius, but I'm also not stupid. I think that's two weeks late. I bitched and complained to him. I said, why are we spending $300 on shipping if it's showing up two weeks later and I have to put the damn thing together in the middle of winter? I was like, it's, I'm up north. You said four to six weeks. It should be here. You're running your company right in four to six weeks. Uh, well, you have to understand with COVID going on and we're a small business. I don't care. Your customer is always right. I don't care about COVID and the sauna industry. Well, COVID, just cut the wood. Do it. It's COVID's going on. Does that stop you from going out into the forest and getting a, a Canadian redwood a cedar? Is that affecting the cedar industry? Well, actually, Trevor, cedar has skyrocketed. I don't care. Four to six weeks is four to six weeks, you fucks. Eight weeks later, it shows up. Not only does it, it, it take eight weeks, but it doesn't show up at the house. They drop it off at USPS Special Delivery. Well, we can't get a semi back there. Which is true and valid, I understand. But fuck you. Okay, all right. <laughs> I have to go. I have to take my father's truck. He's had COVID. He's trying to work. Dad, I need your truck. Well, son, you're no, no. I stole my father's truck and hooked up a trailer to it. I stole a trailer. I don't even know whose trailer it was. And I went to USPS Special Delivery. And I had to wait. I can barely taste and smell still from COVID, by the way, which is six weeks later. And I walked into this fucking USPS special delivery in Iron Mountain. And I, I can barely smell. And it, I got hit with a wall of cigarette smoke. I mean, wh what are these fucking people doing? <laughs> so I go pick it up and I bring it here. Okay, great. Okay, next problem. Open it up. Start to put it together. Get ready. Take it all out. Get the shit. Because remember, it's a kit. Pay attention. No instructions. This is the biggest jigsaw puzzle I've ever put together. Okay? it. Well, just get the instructions online. Go fuck you. Fuck you take a few extra, take a, lose a little bit of profit and print off the instructions for your customers. And then not only did they have no instructions to put together a fucking massive sauna that cost $5,000, okay? Not only did they not have instructions, but then the instructions that they had online, they weren't even specific to the sauna that we bought. There was no other ones. I checked. Okay. And, okay, so no late, no instructions. Great. Okay. We're off to a good start, Redwood Outdoors. Good job. Okay. Step three. Okay. Now, this was, as they said, a six-person sauna. You click on the sauna. It says six-person. That's Six people. Okay, great. It's a fucking four-person sauna. Oh, you heard right. 
You heard right. These motherfuckers, they advertise it as a six-person sauna, and they show pictures of a six-person sauna, and then they fucking sent me a four-person sauna. These fucking assholes. My sister Allie came over and said, "Is oh, because it, it looks great. It's nice. It's going to do the job. Yes. It's going to be nice. It's going to be fun. It's going to last, hopefully, forever. And she goes, is it everything you thought it would be? And I said, no. I can't get six people in here, let alone four fatties. What are we doing? Why would you advertise a sauna as a six-person sauna and then ship a four-person sauna? Well, you can squeeze six people in. I'm skinny, and no, you can't. Americans are fat. Most everyone's fat. That's all right. Okay? It's, they're fat. No, it's a four person. So late, no instructions, and it's the wrong sauna. Why the fuck would you send pictures? Like you put pictures when you click on the sauna that I ordered. You click on that motherfucker. And then you know what? Yeah, you know what pops up? Pictures of a different sauna. That's like me ordering a black guitar, like a black Les Paul, and a fucking red Telecaster shows up. So I'm a little frustrated, okay? And then they say, four hours to assemble. Maybe if you had some fucking instructions to come with it. Well, four hours to assemble if you have modest woodworking skills. Do, do I look... Like, I have done any woodworking. No. All right? My hands are very soft. Moisturized. I'm, a well, I'm well groomed. I, did my, I do my hair every day. Do you think I'm doing woodworking? <laughs> woodworking. All right? Can't breathe. No. So, day one. Cousin comes over, which was good. Thank you, Eric. If you're listening, I love you. You helped me so much. We put the whole thing together. Seven hours. It's fine. The three hours things didn't didn't matter. I, I didn't care about that. I didn't expect us to be able to do it in four hours. And we put it together and it looks great. Next day, put on more shit. Again, guessing. Because there's no instructions. And then yesterday, my mother and I spent six hours. Six hours? A little bit. Five hours shingling it, okay, because we ordered shingles to put it up, Ugh, shingles to cover the roof, to, to extend the life of the sauna. They didn't provide any shingle nails. Like, what the, what kind of company is this? Listen, I hate to throw any company out of the bus, especially right now during COVID. All right, times are tough. If you want to order from Redwood Outdoors, go fucking ahead. But I will say, I feel as if I should write a strongly worded, what's the word? Email? And just, I, I should just, I want to rip them apart review wise. One star. One, and they're a small company. And then I'm going to promote this one star review. I'm going to put $1,000 behind it. Thank you, patrons. I'm going to put $1,000 behind it in promotion, and I'm going to promote it all over the country so that this business goes under. So, so no one else buys it. So no one else buys from them. Uh, listen, I mean, it's like, in all seriousness, all that stuff did piss me off, but the sauna looks, it looks great. Um, I, I think it's going to work really, really well. Uh, we just have to finish up the shingles today, just the very, very top. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be great, but like, I, I am genuinely mad that it's like, why the fuck would you send me a four person when I spent 5,000, when we spent $5,000 on a fucking six person? Like, don't show me different pictures, you liars. What are you doing? What kind of company are you running? So, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't say how the sauna is yet because we haven't used it, but I'm sure that 
it's going to be great. It look like the inside is really beautiful. The red the the redwood cedar is really beautiful. The shingles went up great. Oh. Oh, the what the fuck? Got a fucking alarm going off. There you go. You lost your first second. This always fucking happens. I can't have one episode where I just have <laughs> the fucking camera on for the extended hour. That was just a second. It's not a big deal. <sighs> Fired up. Listen, patrons, if you're still listening. This was this has been a fun episode, and with your permission, I'm going to post this publicly as well. All right? We got to keep growing the Patreon. I feel like this was a fun episode to publicly post. Um, it might give, might give the listeners a little incentive. If you're listening to this on YouTube, because, you're pa- because the patrons are generous and allowed me to post this, thank them. Okay? This is what you get when you sign up. You get an hour of entertainment. You get real entertainment. All right? You get some psycho yelling in his mother's basement for an hour. What could be better than that? You don't. You stop watching Law & Order. Every episode is the same. And they're wearing masks in it. Like, all these shows are wearing masks. Which is kind of neat because they're incorporating, like, the pandemic into the show. But it's... I was in a grocery, I was in Walmart the other day, and I had COVID, uh, if you didn't know, weeks ago. So I'm good. All right. I recovered. Thank the Lord. My family all recovered. Thank God. Truly, I mean that. Uh, but I was, me and my cousin were the only people in there with, without masks, basically. And like, we were just, I was asking, I was like, how fucking crazy is it that it feels weird to be not wearing a mask? Like, a year ago, no one was thinking that. No one, no one, no one a year ago would have thought it'd be weird to be not wearing a mask. Imagine. (laughs) Imagine a year ago, someone came up to you and said, listen, you're going to feel really weird in a year if you're not wearing a mask on your face because everyone else is going to be. It'd just be weird. It would just, it would be odd. And so I'm in there with no mask, walking around, people shooting dirty looks. I go, what the fuck are you looking at? Huh? What the f- <laughs> I didn't, I would never do that. Uh, so it was just, it was weird. It was weird. But like Law and Order, all these other shows that I've been seeing, everyone's wearing masks. It's so weird. Everyone's wearing, wearing the mask. Spread hope, not COVID. I love our governor's message. Listen, I'm not a I'm not a fan of of people like with the whole our governor's an idiot shirt. Like I'm I first off, I think like why the fuck are you wearing that? Are you twelve? If you're an adult and you're wearing <laughs> fucking logos, what are you doing? Maybe not maybe not all shirts, like my sister's boyfriend, he he loves Marvel. It's part of his it's like part of his personality. So he wears a lot of Marvel shirts. Makes sense. He rocks it. But if you're just you're wearing some political statement shirt, just take it off. Get some solid colors. All right. If you're a little heavy up top, I recommend black. All right. It's gonna sh- it's gonna slim you. All right. Black slims you. If you're a little skinny and you want to look a little bigger, a little lighter. All right. It's a light gray. All right. Makes my arms look bigger. You want to expose a little bit of tricep. All right. You don't want it up here. You're trying too hard. You don't want it down here because it's covering everything. Okay? <laughs> little fashion statement at the end. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, folks, we're, we, are, we are at the last minute. I have a radio interview here to do in just a few minutes. I got an uh, email to, that I'm going to be doing this. So I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening. I am going to post this one publicly. So patrons, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to do that. Uh, don't feel gypped, you motherfuckers, all right? I'm trying to fucking promote it. You know what's going on here, all right? I gotta get out of this house. My mother's texting me. You know what's going on. Okay. So, 
I want to thank you all for listening. Again, please reach out to the show uh, at the Trevor Olson Show at gmail.com. I'd love, I'd love to hear from you and all of you guys supporting the show on Patreon. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for all you new listeners listening. Uh, head over to patreon.com slash Trevor Olson. You can receive tons of benefits that all the patrons love. You get handwritten letters. You get autographed pictures. Uh, you get opportunities to Skype with me. You get free. You get uh, uh, you get early access to my music before it's publicly released. You get all sorts of really great things that everybody loves. So I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And thanks so much for listening. We'll see you soon.